Hi, this is Phil Cook, and today we're going to talk radio. We don't do radio very much on my podcast, but uh, today we're going to interview Ruth O'Reilly Smith. I met her many, many years ago when she was a, a radio personality in South Africa. She eventually made her way to the UK, where she's working with UCB Network there in the UK, United Christian Broadcasting. She's a very well-known personality there. People love her. She's fantastic on the radio. And we're going to talk a little bit about her radio career and how that industry is changing and shifting, and uh, uh, we're going to reveal a new book she's just written and come out with. So I encourage you, stay tuned because she's great. She's just really, really terrific. Today, I'm thrilled to have Ruth O'Reilly Smith on the podcast. We don't get radio people very often, and she's a uh, pro professional from the UK starting in South Africa. In fact, I think we met in South Africa a long, long time ago, didn't we? Yeah, we absolutely did. I still remember you and Kathleen were coming up the stairs and I couldn't wait to meet you because I'd used your content for years, Phil, on my oh. radio show. <laughs> uh, and so I, I was desperate to meet you guys. And the station manager had said, Look, why, I know you love Phil Cook's content. Why don't you take him and, and or offer at least to take him and Kathleen around Pretoria uh, to see some of the sites. And that's I was right. like, well, we still have you know, you. that's a bit of a stretch. So. <laughs> we had I a great it. time, though. We really had a good time. We I did. still have the pictures. It was really fun, and it was nice to have some. You went to the University of Pretoria, I think, right? I did, yeah. I studied teaching there. And that, um, is that where you started quite... thinking radio was the future for you? I loved radio, Phil. I always loved radio. I remember listening to shortwave radio. I remember listening to the BBC Live in London, you know, I would, yeah. I would lie in bed listening to shortwave radio and just scan the channels and love voices. I always loved voices, but I never thought that was a thing. Um, at the time, I was in my second year of university uh, studying teaching and yeah. as a week time, uh, weekend job, uh, holiday job, I was doing the announcements in the supermarkets. Uh, and a friend of mine had spotted an uh, advert for radio DJs, English radio DJs, because remember, University of Pretoria is an Afrikaans university. Yes. Um, but I was studying English, and so obviously we had that. They were looking for English DJs. So I went along and had an interview. You, I, I love music, and I know artist names, but I don't know who sings what. And so part of the test was to say, you know, so who's your, your favorite artist? And I was like, well, um, what's that song that's something about tears in heaven or something? <laughs> I mean, it was really ridiculous. Eventually I got the job. So I became a radio host uh, at university. They basically said, we love your voice. You can learn the music. Um, and that's so that's kind of how I got my start in it. I never planned to do radio. I didn't think that was a thing, but it was something that I loved and I've just stayed in it ever since. I love the fact that you started as an announcer in a grocery store. That's fantastic. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we've got half price. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. I, whenever I interview people, particularly in the media, I'm always, I'm fascinated with, their first job. You know, Ralph Winter, I've had him as a guest. He produces, he produced Wolverine, X-Men, Planet of the Apes. He's a, he, he produces $200 million movies for a living. He started designing windows at a department store. And so it's just funny that people feel like after college, they just are going to walk into the job of their dreams and don't realize just how odd sometimes you have to start and where you have to start and how you have to start. And so it's, I think it's an encouraging word to hear that somebody like you, who's now nationally known radio, really internationally known radio presenter is, uh, you know, got her start doing announcements in a grocery store. I think that's a riot. <laughs> I love it. And, you know, as a follower of Christ, I look at moments like that differently. Because I do actually recognize them as God's DNA over my yeah. life. I'm his daughter. And he put something in me from when I was born that was to love and appreciate the medium of radio. Um, you know, not only that, but he saw I loved it so much that he's blessed me with the gift of being able to be paid to do it every day. Well, here, let me ask you this. 
you're an attractive woman. I, you know, I don't get too personal here, but you're very pretty. You're attractive. Thank you're not you. one of these people that <laughs> you're not one of these people that we jokingly say she has a face for radio. You could be a television. Yeah. You could be a <laughs> presenter on television. What was it about radio that that really attracted you from such an early age? Well, I have to say, Phil, that was one of the big pulls for me. The fact that it was, it was, you know, that I wouldn't be known. I think uh, I'm probably actually a bit of an introvert. I love time on my own as much as, you know, I'm, I, I think God has given me the gift of hospitality. So I love hosting people. I get excited about meeting people. I'm interested in people. Um, you know, I want to make people feel at home. I actually kind of really like my own space. I'm quite a private person. So for me to now have to do things like this or, um, you know, in, in radio, sometimes our radio shows get filmed or uh, with United Christian Broadcasters, UCB, that I work with, they are a multimedia organization. Right. And so I'm often being called on to do TV or whatever. So, you know, I do feel a little uncomfortable in front of the television. But I love radio because it's so personal. Yeah. Majority of people listen to radio when they're on their own, maybe in the car, perhaps when they're traveling, maybe when they're in the kitchen. You know, people might listen to radio uh, even as a group, but usually you're having an experience on your own. It's a very personal medium, and that's what I love about it. I mean, I remember just being transported to another world when I was listening into the shortwave radio and this, you know, amazing voice from what seemed like the other, it was the other side of the world. I could travel anywhere. It's a little like reading, I guess, you know, that I'm imagining something happening that I'm not being told through pictures. It's It's a beautiful medium. I've loved it. Well, it's interesting you say that um, it's something people really enjoy on their own. There's something to that, which I think you're right. I'd never thought it in terms of it being a little bit more personal and intimate, but I think you must be right. In fact, I've learned over the years that I learn best by listening. So for me, I pick up things far easier, goes into my subconscious. I'll remember things. I mean, if I if I'm preparing for a guest, for instance, I love learning about them through interviews. So I'll scour the internet for the person I'm going to interview in a couple of weeks' time and and listen into loads of interviews ahead of time and just have that kind of stewing in me. Yeah. And on the day, I just come with my notebook and pen and I've got all this stuff that just I remember, you know, um, so that's how I, that's how I learn is by listening. But I would, I would close my eyes in a situation like that. To listen back. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, when we met Kath- Kathleen and I were in South Africa for a, a big media conference, Christian media conference from people all over Africa really came together in Johannesburg. And, and you, we met, uh, you took us around. We had a great, great time. You interviewed us. And um, since that time, you've gone to the UK. You're working, like you said, with UCB, United Christian Broadcasters in the UK. What got you there? How did you, you know, what, what circumstances took you from South Africa to the UK? Well, that was actually the second time that I then went to the UK. So back in 1999, I was a very young 20s. I wanted to travel the world. I wanted to go and see this voice in London that I'd heard on the shortwave radio so many times as a young girl. Uh, I'd I'd loved English because my English teacher spoke about England. She spoke about Europe. I remember reading a book about Michelangelo's life and I wanted to travel to Italy. So I had this hunger to travel. I also had, I'd read books like God Smuggler and Chasing the Dragon. I wanted to be a a missionary. So I had this desire to travel. So uh, I planned to go for two years. I got a two year working holiday visa and off I went 1999 and started working in a, call center in London, worked there for a few months because I arrived with my demo, prepared to join the BBC, of course. So submitted that, applied for loads of jobs in the BBC and 
sadly never heard back. They missed out there for sure. Oh, totally, <laughs> totally. Um, but what it taught me is to just lay down, lay aside this dream, this passion of mine. And I decided I made a, a an intentional commitment to get to know these people because even though I was coming from South Africa, uh, born and raised within a Christian um, Christian but English home in South Africa, the British were very different to me. The English were so different. And so I just made this resolve to get to know these people. I wasn't going to have any ulterior motives. I wasn't going to try and get into radio anymore. Uh, and it was amazing how at that moment, I was reminded of a colleague of mine. We used to host the afternoon program, afternoon drive show uh, on the very radio station you speak about when I was working there when I met you and Kathleen Mm -hmm. and he'd actually moved over to the UK with his family just a few months earlier and I'd completely forgotten so I got in touch with him and he said interesting you should get in touch with me now Uh, the station I'm involved with is looking for a newsreader uh, and someone who would head up the news department and Uh, help out with a youth program. Any chance you would be interested? It was a Christian radio station based in West Bromwich, which is kind of the industrial heart of England, and broadcasting back to Central and Southern Africa on shortwave. Now, the interesting thing is my go-to, my kind of great love and the thing that I'm best at is music, radio, Um, And conversations like this, usually I'm the one in your seat asking the questions. So this is a little unnerving for me. Um, But that's kind of my sweet spot. For a little while, just before I came over to the UK, I was involved in the news department. It was completely out of my comfort zone. When I first started out as a news presenter doing live news, I have a huge uh, respect for people doing live news. Uh, I was so bad at reading live that we had listeners calling up. The same listeners who called up to say, we love Ruth on the radio. She's so amazing. Wow, what a great presenter. They were saying, get her off the station. She sucks. She's so bad. And this is like Christian radio, right? So it was really bad. It was something I had to learn to get better at. Here I arrive in the UK and I've got this opportunity to be part of the news department, head up the news department for Christian radio station broadcasting back to Africa. It was just extraordinary. I went to met the station manager. He offered me the job on the day and I handed in my resignation and moved up to West Bromwich, started working in radio. So that was kind of the first time that I started in England. And uh, through him, I got a work permit I also met my future husband, uh, who's from Birmingham, uh, a Bromley, and we got married. Long story short is I I ended up moving and uh, we moved to Stoke-on-Trent and I started working with UCB, worked with UCB full time for a little bit, um, had the children in Stoke-on-Trent, and then the financial crisis happened. And my husband lost his job and he was offered a a position in Dubai. We lived in Dubai for a couple of years. And then it was the Arab uprising, the spring uprising. And again, he was retrenched. He came back to the UK to look for a job. And I said, look, I'm not staying in the Middle East on my own with the children. I'll go to South Africa. Uh, You let me know when you get a job and I'll follow you wherever you are, darling. Uh, So I went back to South Africa. And in the meantime, I was offered a job then at Impact Radio that you're talking about. So that's kind of the the long story of how we ended up back in South Africa. But we stayed there then for a few years and felt God was calling us back to the UK. So did you immediately go with UCB when you got back to the UK? I was working freelance uh, for UCB. The amazing thing, Phil, is that All of that time, seven years we were out of the country, I was working as a freelancer with UCB. So we'd set up the system. We had a a really great program that we'd basically only just installed. 
And then I was off to Dubai and they said, well, why don't you just try it out? (laughs) So I was broadcasting a daily radio show, Christian radio show from my bedroom in Dubai. Um, And it was being broadcast across the whole of the UK every day. Uh, The thing, one of the things I love about you is you're so incredibly innovative, you're flexible, you know, and that's a great thing about radio too, that you could do it from just about anywhere, um, on the go, on the run, traveling, whatever. It's, it gives you that kind of flexibility, but you're just great about figuring out, okay, I'm going to go to Dubai. How can we make this thing work there? And uh, even operating out of a, out of your studio bedroom. Um, that's, that's amazing to me. And I wish more people had that kind of spirit of, Hey, let's make this thing work. We'll, we'll, let's figure this out. Um, that's just always been a really great part of, of your personality. I really think that is God helping me. It, it's regularly me just saying, Holy spirit, I really need your help. Cause it feels like I'm just going to you know, fall flat here. But I think there's also something innate that God has placed in me to to really want to make my life count. That I feel like I can't and I don't want to waste my days. Let me ask you this. I want to talk about your book in a second, but but what would you say to younger people getting into the, the media world? You know, radio doesn't get a lot of publicity these days. Everybody's pushing the podcasting, the internet, television, short videos, all those kind of things. Most Christian universities are trying to train students to come to Hollywood, which is great. But I feel like radio is still a really viable medium and people aren't being trained to go do it. People aren't even being encouraged to go pursue radio. What would you say to somebody who's considering a career in media? What would you encourage them to, I mean, would you encourage them to go into radio? What would you tell them? Well, you know, UCB is looking at doing a lot more podcasting now. And a lot of our programs are being turned into podcasts. But there's something electric about live radio. There's something so beautiful and spontaneous and authentic. I think, you know, that word has been banted around a lot these days. A lot of people are looking for authenticity. They're looking for something that is not actually squeaky clean, is a little kind of frayed on the edges, maybe a little rusty, perhaps a bit um, unpolished. If you're recording a podcast, you can make it sound fantastic. But right. There's something of the humanity that gets taken out of that. And that's the beautiful thing about live radio is that you've got some of those human experiences. You've got some of those moments of spontaneity. I mean, there are pre-recorded programs that you would record for radio, for sure. Um, and those sound great as well. And those are also fine. But I would just say there's something really wonderful about radio, sitting in a radio studio. My, my daughter thinks it's bizarre that I get a buzz from sitting essentially in a glass box. Yeah. Just speaking into a microphone for four hours every day. But I love it. Uh, you know, the music. The fact that I get to do Christian radio has meant it's kind of been my therapy, really. Uh, Getting to speak to and interview people like you. I've learned so much about God, about humanity, about myself. I've learned about my talents and my abilities. Uh, You know, God has just shown me some amazing things through the guests that I've had, through the music that I've had. It's fed my soul. There are many times where I say the great thing about radio is You know, I can wake up feeling pretty rotten, maybe have a bad day, perhaps have a bit of an argument with my husband, have a go at the kids on the way to dropping them off at school. Then I get into the studio and I'm on Christian radio. Now I've got to tell everybody to be encouraged, to be hopeful, you know, go with God. And in the meantime, My life is falling apart outside. But the amazing thing is that by the end of those four hours, because I've been speaking God's word, something in me changes. Something in me has shifted. I've still got to go out of the studio and apologize to my husband and make things right with my kids and sort out how I'm going to sort out my finances. But something in me has changed. And that's the power of radio. 
You know, it's something when you direct actors, as I've done for a long time, when you direct actors, you, you tell them the physical action will create the feeling inside of you. You know, don't don't wait to feel that moment. Just do the action that helps. And, and I've, I've thought in my own personal life, if I don't feel happy, I just start to smile. And it's amazing how that comes along. So exactly right. No matter how low you may be uh, going into the studio, interviewing people, introducing the music, having conversations, suddenly things on the inside start changing. So I think you're exactly right. Now, now along this journey, this radio journey you've been on, you've also been writing for a long time. Uh, tell me about the new book, God Speaks. I mean, wh where did that come from? What was the idea for that? Uh, tell me about it. So God has had me on this journey of surrender and obedience, Phil, for the last few years, just really surrendering my will and learning to listen to his voice and respond super quick. So in the run-up to Lent 2020, I sensed that God wanted me to begin to surrender some stuff. Um, as a radio host, you know, Lent comes around and kind of one of your default things is to say, so what are you giving up for Lent? Especially here in England, it's quite a big thing. Right. This thing drops in my spirit and God just says, you need to give up Netflix. And I was like, that has to be you, God. I'm in the middle of a series that I really love. Surely not. Uh, but I knew I had to, so I did. And when Lent started, I, always felt, I also felt God was calling me to write. Now, I had journaled on occasion uh, for years, you know, on and off. But this felt like it was something different. As soon as I started writing, it felt like, this was a gift that was not just for me. And the Lord dropped in my spirit that it was going to be a book. And so I wrote these letters that eventually ended up becoming this book. Uh, God Speaks, 40 Letters from the Father's Heart. It's essentially a letter from God based purely on the word of God out of what God had been depositing in me over the years of reading the Bible and just allowing the Holy Spirit to show me some stuff in the word. His word was just flowing out of me and he was feeding me as I was just writing these letters. I knew that it was a gift from the Lord. God speaks 40 letters from the father's heart. First of all, I encourage anybody watching, listening, um, check it out, go order. You, where, where can we get it? Can you get it on platforms? I mean, you're in the UK, I'm in the US. Are people going to be listening all over the place? I guess we can get it online anywhere, right? Absolutely. Yeah, you can get it online. Ask your local bookstore to get it in. Just tell them to contact Authentic Media. And, you know, I love us. Uh, it would be great if we could support our local bookstores for sure, but it is also available online. Yeah, absolutely. That's so fantastic. Well, um, I, I really appreciate you doing this. We, I, like I said at the very start, we don't get many radio people on and I should do this more because I, I like you, I, I just adore radio and I, I came real close to going that direction when I was in college, except I couldn't understand patch panels. That was way beyond my comprehension. This is how <laughs> old I am. It was, it was patch panels back then to work the radio studio and I couldn't figure it out, but I thought at one time this would be for me. And so I've always loved talking to radio personalities and you've done a brilliant job. I love it. When we're visiting the UK, we listen to you online. Um, it just, it's fun being with you and I appreciate what you've done. And, and just a word for people that are out there, her story of getting her book, you know, going through the struggle of getting it done. These kind of things are, are, are hard, you know, launching a movie, launching a television program, a radio show, a book, all these things are really hard, but I really feel like if God calls you to do it, then we need to really step up. And, and I, I think the stakes are so high. Ruth, if, you, if there was one last thing you'd leave people with, just a last little thought here, what do you think it would be? Just be still and hear God speaking over your life. You know, in the midst of the noise, there's a lot of noise. And I know you speak into this a lot, Phil, about the clutter and the noise. And how do I get my voice? How do I get my message? How do I get my call noticed by anybody? Yeah. Just be still. And when I hear the voice of my maker over me, I can just rest. I can be at peace. And he'll lead me. He'll show me moment by moment, day by day, 
what I need to do, what I need to say, who I need to connect with. So be still. I, I think God speaks 40 letters from the Father's heart is a great place to start learning how to listen to God. It's very, very important. So Ruth, thanks. You're fantastic. I'm Kathleen Sinzer Love. Thanks so much for being on the program. Well, that was fantastic. God Speaks, 40 Letters from the Father's Heart. That's Ruth's new book, and I just appreciate her so much, and I'd encourage you to go get it. It's a great start, like she said, to get to that quiet place where you can hear God's voice and really decide where to go in the future. Thanks so much for tuning in. Please share this with somebody. If you know somebody in radio or somebody who's a film student or a video student or media student, and they're thinking about their future, radio may be a great possibility for them. It's much bigger than people think. It's certainly not going away, and I would encourage people look at radio as a possible medium for getting your message out there. And remember my book, Maximize Your Influence, How to Make Digital Media Work for Your Church, Your Ministry, and You. It's the ultimate reference that you need if you're a leader on how to integrate media to communic and communication to tell your story and get on the radar out there. Thanks again for watching us. Recommend us. Uh, give me your comments. Ask me questions if you'd like. We'd love to hear from you. The show notes are going to be below. So thank you again for being a part of this week's podcast. 